Hello, my name is Dominique Walker and I'm the Publishing Officer for the Scottish Universities Press. Academic libraries across Scotland are collaborating to develop an open access publishing platform that is owned and managed by the participating libraries. Developments are now at an advanced stage with a launch anticipated in late 2022. This introductory presentation sets out the background to the project, covering what the press sets out to achieve and why. It will also look at where we've got to so far and what we've got planned next. The project is being coordinated through SCURL, which is the Scottish Confederation of University and Research Libraries, the membership body that supports collaborative initiatives across Scotland's academic and research libraries. SCURL is hosted at the National Library of Scotland and has existed in some form for over 30 years. So our member libraries have a very strong background in working together to support cooperative developments. The process began with the identification of a shared challenge. In this case, it was a need for a clear and cost effective route to open access publishing that would satisfy a funder requirements, ref requirements and align to the principles of Plan S. There is a growing focus on open access by funders and the wider scholarly communications community and the options for publishing open access with some commercial publishers can be complex and costly. SUP aims to offer a more cost effective and straightforward way to publish research at Scottish institutions. Beyond meeting this immediate objective, there is an appetite to explore alternative approaches to academic publishing that are of the academy and have the needs of the academy at the core. Publishing more work open access can help raise the global visibility and usage of research at Scottish HEIs, increasing the high impact of Scottish research outputs across all disciplines. As a not-for-profit press, there is also an opportunity to publish more specialist content, focusing on academic quality over sales, as well as opportunities for collaboration across institutions. SCURL knew they had the capacity to work together to deliver a mutually beneficial outcome for the sector in Scotland. So in 2019, SCURL commissioned research to test the proof of concept for a collaborative universities press. The resulting report was very favourable towards the prospect and discussions began on taking forward the findings. The pandemic intervened and plans had to be refactored accordingly, so 2022 is now shaping up to be the year of action. So that explains the high level why and the why now. Scottish Universities Press is seeking to produce an online open access publishing platform where digital content is freely available to all using CC BY licences. In addition to this, the press is looking to provide a print on demand option. The scope of publishing will initially focus on monographs on any subject produced by academics at one of the 18 participating institutions. The press will focus on monographs in the initial two year pilot phase because there is the strongest need here for alternative approaches. UKRI policy is changing in 2024 to include open access monographs. The press aims to provide a compliant and cost effective route to open access publication for academics who may be affected by this change. There is the intention to expand to cover different types of content, such as journals and e-textbooks, as the press develops. We will cover all subject areas that receive submissions, conscious that the arts and humanities and social sciences are likely to be the most involved in publishing monographs. The press will operate on a not-for-profit basis. The delivery model, working with participating institutions, offers the scope to bottom out the true costs of publishing. The press wants to provide a fully featured professional publishing solution and is committed to finding the best way possible to cover the costs. And we will do this in consultation with our participating ATIs. There are 18 participating institutions, ranging from the larger research intensives to smaller specialist institutions. The Open University Library is taking part two. This is a library run press. So our library teams are crucial in their daily conversations with academics, and involvement in the wider policy landscape, which is vital to informing the direction of the press. Within institutions, our academic colleagues will be the drivers for content and service needs as authors for the press. There will be considerable variation in the publishing needs and patterns of our different institutions. The press has developed an open and inclusive management structure so that all participants have equal voice in the decision making. And for this reason, the management board has one representative from each participating institution. The management board was formed towards the end of last year and meets quarterly. They are responsible for providing the strategic direction for the press. 
Management Board is chaired by Hannah Whaley, who is Assistant Director at the University of Dundee Library, and the Vice Chair is Dominic Tate, who is Head of Library Research Support at the University of Edinburgh. On the 1st of March, Dominique Walker joined as a publishing officer and is the first dedicated member of staff. Gillian Daly, who is SCURL's executive officer, takes on the role of project manager and she is responsible for the central coordination of efforts across the group. The approach of the press is very much dependent on the contributions of our member libraries, using the skills and expertise available across the SCURL network to drive the project. It allows the press to develop rapidly while offering the potential to scale up according to demand over time. Keeping as much of the activity as possible within the SCAL network also means an ability to get a handle on the true costs of digital publishing and the opportunity to keep those costs as low as possible for our participating institutions. The press will operate on a not-for-profit basis and any surpluses will be reinvested into the press for the benefit of all our partner institutions. We have a two year commitment from the participating institutions to contribute to the running costs and this covers things like salaries for dedicated staff, platform hosting and branding, for example. The press will also develop a platform in collaboration with the University of Edinburgh. After a review in March around the delivery model for the platform, we decided on a local rather than outsourced option and we formed a small platform working group with staff at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, to progress with the platform via the existing SCURL shared service route. This means that the team were able to quickly produce the test server and the platform is now ahead of schedule. All of this work is being supported by the management board of the press, as mentioned in the previous slide, but also by our editorial board, who I'll talk about in the next slide. Overall, we see the journey to establishing the press as a five to ten year project. The editorial board is formed of 14 academic colleagues from our participating institutions, as well as two external members, and the chair of the management board will also sit on the editorial board. We decided from the outset that we wanted to be as open and transparent as possible, so our call for editorial board members was opened up to all academics at our participating institutions, and this was promoted to colleagues via the libraries. There was a very positive response to an initial call for expressions of interest, and we received 64 applications in total. The intention was to have a good coverage of disciplines and types of institution, as well as broad geographical coverage across Scotland. We are also keen for the editorial board to promote diversity across the group, and we have included two specific places for early career researchers, giving them experience of working on the board with guidance from more experienced colleagues. The role of editorial board members will be to advocate for the press and encourage submissions, review proposals and contribute to the development and ongoing management of the peer review process. The editorial board was announced in July and will meet for the first time in September. PACE has been rapid this year, deliberately using mechanisms for early startup and entrepreneurial ventures. A publishing officer was appointed in March and is the only dedicated member of staff for the press. The recruitment of the editorial board then took place in May and June with the announcement made in July. The next major milestone will now be developing the online platform and, as mentioned, this is under progress with the team at the University of Edinburgh. In this period, we uh, were also busy developing the branding for the press and speaking to lots of our academic colleagues and also at various conferences and events to promote the press. The focus for the next two quarters will be on content and coherence of the editorial board and I'll discuss this further in the next slide. A major milestone will be the first editorial board meeting in September. The editorial board will start to look at the peer review process and how to proceed with content. It will also be important for the editorial board to work together to become a coherent group. Once the editorial board have met, we'll be in a position to launch a call for monographs and content, so please keep an eye out for announcements later in the year. Over the next few months, we'll also be focusing on the cost of publishing our business model, as well as publishing timelines and work for we will also work on our communications output with the launch of a dedicated SUP website and blog, as well as a mailing list to keep interested parties up to date with our progress. And lastly, we are building relationships in the wider open access and publishing communities. We've joined Publishing Scotland as a network member to take advantage of their training and guidance, as well as having conversations with JISC, Hopim, and lots of other new university presses across the UK and abroad. 
It's a very exciting time and we want to make sure we're connecting up with all of the amazing work that is going on with open access publishing, both in the UK and internationally. Finally, I want to talk about some of the opportunities we have as a collaborative not-for-profit press. As a collaboration of 18 institutions, we have the opportunity to utilise existing skills and networks within our institutions. We're able to turn inwards wherever possible for design work, publishing guidance, and making sure the effort spent on peer review by institutions has a noticeable contribution to the Scottish HEI community. Additionally, our not-for-profit status frees us from some of the constraints faced by commercial publishers that cause restrictions on publishing longer or more specialist content. It also allows us to provide support for early career researchers at our institutions. Early career researchers can be underrepresented and undervalued in traditional publishing, yet are producing exciting work, often the ideas that challenge prevailing thinking in their fields. We have the opportunity to provide guidance and support to early career researchers who may be publishing their first monograph. We also have an opportunity to maximise digital publishing opportunities with a variety of different content types, for example, shorter or longer form. As a library-led press, we can also be very responsive to all policy changes and to any changes in the higher education environment, adapting the press to meet the needs of our institutions. And lastly, we have an opportunity to be as open and transparent in everything we do as possible. For example, with our open call for an editorial board, and we plan to be completely transparent with our business model. Uh, many of these opportunities are still being understood as the press develops. However, it's certainly important to speak to the opportunity to continually challenge the status quo and highlight how receptive the press is to doing that. So thank you very much for listening to this introduction to the Scottish Universities Press. We are very keen to hear from academics and staff across all of our institutions. This is very much a collaborative effort. We are also keen to hear from people in the wider community as well. So please contact Publishing Officer Dominique Walker at dwalker002 at dundee.ac.uk with any feedback or thoughts. Everything is useful to help us develop the press to the needs of our institutions. Lastly, here are a few useful links to the SCURL website and to the proof of concept report that I mentioned earlier. I've also provided a link to the JISC New University Press Toolkit, which has been an invaluable resource when planning and developing the press. Thanks very much for listening.